What's up, fight fans? And I'm back at it with another one here at Round One Sports Talk. We're going to be going over the press conference, so to speak, with Naoya Inoue and Stephen Kubo Fulton. Okay, let's get right into it. Seeing that Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. has just announced their fight and that it is official on July 29th. I reported that and my subscribers know that I told them that it was July 29th and you can check the timeline. My video was out there before most of these guys' video was out there. And I told you that my sources were good. Not only that, I did make a prediction on the Devin Haney Lomachenko fight. And I was more than accurate on that fight. So I'm pretty much um, batting pretty good. I'm like 900 or something, right? So anyway, this fight, this highly anticipated matchup that is coming up is kind of floating underneath the radar, if you ask me. Now, Yoya Inoue and Steven Kubo Fulton will be fighting in Japan. And I understand that the fight's not going to be in America, but... And the time frames are off. So I just want to warn you for those that don't understand or have never seen a Naoya Inoue fight in Japan. The time frames are different. So I don't want you to miss the fight. It's going to be like at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right? They'll get in the ring around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock roughly. Right? Or sometimes it was even earlier than that. Okay? So um, we got to check the time on that. So, Naoya Inoue and Stephen Kubo Fulton, if you ask me, this is the biggest fight of the year. And if you haven't noticed, as fight fans, if you're a casual fan or a hardcore fan, that we have been getting some interesting fights kicked off 2000 into, um, 2023, right? So, the reason why we're getting so many big fights and the best fighting the best is because the UFC started to take over. And Dana White doesn't play that shit in the UFC. He wants to see the best fighting the best. And there was a few times that he missed out on some big fights. So the organization basically asks the fans what they want to see. And they put the fights together like that. Okay? So, in order to compete with that and the market and everything, I'm pretty sure that all the heads in boxing sat down, all parties, and said, you know what? We're going to have to give the fight fans what they want to see. And sure enough, they did. And this has turned off to be an extraordinary year. We've had some big fights in between. We even had some controversy fights. But what we did get were fights. And we got that action. So now, now that we have these fights around, coming around, and we ha I do have to admit that you could put together all these fights but you're going to need these fighters to pull this off. Right now, we stand in boxing at a golden age in boxing where all this talent is coming in. And these guys, is it just me? But we have a lot of talent right now. We have a lot of young talent from Zender, you know, to... Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Boo Boo Schuster. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the list goes on, you know, of a lot of young, talented guys coming up, you know. Um, you know, Frank the Ghost Martin is in that class, too. Look, out of sight, out of mind. A lot of people haven't even been talking about Jerome Boos Ennis. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're waiting for Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. handle their business so that Ennis can get a, a his time to shine because he's been waiting in the back wing. You know what I mean? Um, so there's a lot of big fights, you know what I'm saying, that are going to come about to end the year, you know, um, they um, and this big fight right here. Now, Yoya Inoue and Stephen Kubo Fulton. Now, I've tried to look up a lot of tape on both fighters, and I tried to get to see if I can get in contact with some of them to see some of their training, but everything has been like hush, hush, really locked down. I mean, these fighters are in the gym right now, and they're really training. Now, Yoya Inoue's family is just coming off his little celebration because his brother became a world champion once again. So, um, they quickly got off of that. 
writing and focus on to Nayoya anyway. Stephen Kubo Fulton Scooter has been in the lab himself, okay? And at some point, they are going to transition to Japan for the fight, okay? So I'm going to try to get as much as I can from that. But I believe that they are doing the fight fans us a disservice because I wish they would release more content out of Japan from Nayoya Inoue's camp or at least pick up the phone. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I can't even talk to these dudes, you know, but look, I know one thing for sure. This fight will not let us down. These are true. Of the top fighters in their prime right now in boxing. And they are both leading the way. Steven Kubo Fulton is the number one guy at 122 pounds. You better believe that. He doesn't own all four straps. And there's another man out there with another two belts. MJ, right? But that's business we'll get to later. As of right now, Steven Kubo Fulton has answered the challenge. Nayoya Inoue came into his kingdom and to his domain and challenged him for his belt. True champion. He didn't take another step forward. He could have took that fight with Brandon Figueroa at 126. He could have took that fight, but we've already seen that fight. You know what I'm saying? Now, he said the big fight, the fight that will put me on the map. If I could shut up all these critics... And beat Nayoya in a way that will catapult Stephen Fulton's career in the direction of superstardom in America. He would have successfully defended his titles. I believe win, lose, or draw, he's still moving up. I'm not sure if he will stick around to try to unify all four belts. Now, if the if the situation presents itself, let's say he beats Nayoya in a way, and MJ says, yo, let's put this together right away within six months, you know, who knows, you know, maybe, maybe he takes that opportunity, but he's going to have to pull it off, right, and, you know, a lot of my um, subscribers said that, you know, why did I say he would have to survive only up, to, you know, past the third round, you know what I'm saying, you know, go back in my video, you can watch where I said, maybe, Maybe if he gets past the third round. Nayoya Inoue carries his power the complete fight. The complete time. You're going to have to be on your game. He's going to have to stay focused the complete fight. It's not like I'm saying he's going to get past the third round and it's going to be a breeze. But if you can get past the third round, it will at least give him that much confidence to say, look, I'm still here. It's the third round and I'm still here. I'm still in front of him. You know what I'm saying? Whatever I'm doing, I'm either doing it right because I'm still in the fight. And mentally, if you can get past that third round, it will give him more, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro, let's hit it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, with that being said, he goes out there and gets knocked out in the fourth round. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, it's when you're fighting a guy like Nayoya anyway, it's not easy. You There's no point in the fight where you can lull yourself to sleep because at some points in some of the fights, you know, you, you, you need to take a break. And I noticed in Stephen Kubo Fulton's fights, in all of his fights, at some point in the fight, he was taking some of the rounds off. Nayoya Inoue barely ever takes 10 seconds off in a round. You know, if he steps back, he takes a little breather, but he's back at you with the pressure. That's his whole fighting mentality. Is to apply pressure onto you and not let you breathe, not let you think, not let you get into sync, not let you get into rhythm. That is his whole fight strategy uh, of, of his forward attack. You know what I'm saying? Now, being the fact that Nayoya Inoue has a real rare fighting style in boxing, meaning there have been boxers in the past that have been really hard hitters. And they never relied on learning how to box. Um, case in point, Dante Wilder. Dante Wilder is one of the most hard-hitting um, heavyweight champions to ever exist, right? He, he just fell in love with the power and he forgot how to box. They forgot to stop to say, hey, at one point, you're going to have to learn how to box. Because if Dante Wilder knew how to box, I bet you he would have beat. 
I'm um, Tyson Fury. But anyway, and then some guys have the ability to box very well, right? And have no power. You know what I'm saying? Stephen Kubo Fulton. You see? Naoya Inoue is a rare blend of both of them. Where that he has great power, a good boxing fundamentally, he's solid all the way around. And yet his dedication stays, and he's always a student of the game. Every time I see Naoya Inoue on the next time out, he's a better version of himself. You know, I you know, a lot of guys will say, well, you know, he he does he doesn't fight everyone the same. You know what I'm saying? But if you give him those opportunities and he sees you're just not covering, well, what 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 would a good fighter do? Captivate on the opportunity, wouldn't he? Right? And Naoya Inoue has done such. So that's why I say Stephen Kubo Fulton has a lot of puzzles to solve. And, you know, this is a very dangerous fight. When you got a guy in front of you, you know, and I've said this in my other videos. Let's take away Naoya Inoue's power. Let's say that Stephen Kubo Fulton was able to nullify his power. What are you left with? You're still left with a superior boxer standing in front of you. It's not like Naoya Inoue relies on his power. That's my point. He's a rare blend where that if you do nullify his power, he can exchange with you. And he's going to set you up. Okay? So, you know, when you get to this kind of level in boxing, these boxers know that it's much more than just throwing punches. It's much more than just having will, heart, and determination. Those things come in a, into play in a fight, but it's much more than that. This is skill, real skill. These are two highly skilled men in the prime of their careers. And I, this stands to be a great matchup, a great fight, okay? And I can't wait for this fight to start. You know, um, I, I wish they would kick off the press conference now. I would like to see Naoya Inoue. I want to see what he looks like physically. You know, I want to see what Stephen Kubo Fulton looks like physically. You know what I'm saying? You know, for me, it's in the eyes. It's in the eyes when, on the day of the weigh-in, when the two fighters meet. For me, anyway, this is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's always the eyes for me. You know what I'm saying? I need to see that eye of the tiger inside of Fulton's eye. I need to see it. You know what I'm saying? I need to see that in, 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 in Naoya Inoue's eye. I, I've seen it many times in his eye. You know, he has like a blank stare. But no matter what, the eyes never lie. Every single time I've seen that man take the stage, I just look in his eyes. And I'm like, here he comes. Here he comes. He's coming. He's coming. You know what I'm saying? He's got that dead killer stare, you know, he has real dark eyes, you know, and, uh, you know, that's for me, for me, that's where it is, when I see the fighters finding in the way in, and they face each other, you know what I'm saying, and on that moment, that's when I know the fight's on, I'm like, this guy came to fight, or this guy came to fight, you know what I'm saying, and, uh, you know, I, I just can't wait, you know, and I also would like to know, I really would like to know before the fight starts, what was Naoya Inoue's injury? Does anybody out there know exactly what it was? Not a hearsay. Well, if you got, if you have a rumor or you heard something, just say that. Just say it. Just say it. Look, um, speculation is saying or rumors are saying, you know, it was this. Don't just come out and say this was a fact if you really didn't know. You know what I'm saying? And then can you back it up? But if you do out there know and you happen to be a person that knows exactly what the injury was, man, I would love to know. I would love to know. I just, you know, you know, was it an ankle? Was it a hand? You know, there's a little, there's a little difference. There. You know, that can play a factor. You tell me that is his hand. What if it was both his hands? You know what I'm saying? Now, oh yeah, in a way, does hit hard with both hands. So, you know, um, that being said, I look. 
I I love this fight, man. You know, and I don't want to be that guy that comes out and says, you know, but you want to know something? That's why I made this sports channel in the begin with. Not to be biased, to really speak my mind, to put myself out there on a limb for for real fight fans and for people that agree. You know what I'm saying? And I can have an opinion. I can say something. If y'all want to criticize for me for saying what I'm about to say, well, then criticize me for it. You know what I'm saying? But as a fight fan, I, I should have the right to, to like what I like. And this fight for me, this fight is better than Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford. There, I said it. There, I said it. You For me, for me, listen. This, these dudes, this is the fight right here. And we need to give this fight some more, some recognition. And we need to build this up. And we need to put these videos out there. Because I'm going to tell you right now, man. You know what I'm saying? For me anyway. And I have, I should have the right to my, my opinion. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, when the Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence Jr. fight comes around. You know, I, I. I might like that, you know, I, I'm not saying I don't like it, but I'm, I'm being honest, as a, as anticipation, like, the Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford, for me, kind of like, the air kind of, kind of, like, blew out of it, because I was waiting for it for so fucking long, you know, once this fight got here, he announced that he was moving up into the division, vacated his belt, there was no games in this man, he brought it like this, baby, you know what I'm saying, so, that's why, you know what I'm saying? And and I like what I see with Nayoya in a way. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you like this fight better than Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr., leave a comment in this comment section below. Let me know how you feel. If you like the Terrence Crawford fight better, then, hey, there's nothing wrong with it. But I don't want to be that guy to be like, you know what I'm saying, not speak up or have a voice because, nah, man, you know what I'm saying, that's why I started doing this, you know what I mean, but this is the fight right here, and I think we need to build this fight up, and I'm going to continue making videos on this fight, and support the channel, support the video, so that way, you know what I'm saying, the, they can see, man, that this, this is the fight right here, so fight fans, listen, please like, subscribe, um, Hit the bell icon, um, and I'm on to the next one. That's all I got for you today. Peace.